When I hear the word salvation, I immediately have questions coming up in my mind. Salvation from what? Salvation by whom? Salvation for what? And how do I get saved? So I'm going to look at the topic of salvation by answering those four questions. And the first question is, salvation from what? In Colossians 1, it says, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son that he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So it seems that we're delivered or saved from slavery. Now you might think I'm not a slave, but God is saying there's a domain of darkness. So we are saved from living under the dominion of darkness, which I think is referring to another dimension that we can't see. One where evil powers and principality and Satan himself operates. There is also a slavery to an idea system of groups of people who do not count on God and therefore are not in touch with ultimate reality. There is slavery to our own self-focused desires that leads us away from God by not trusting in him and not trusting in his ways, that they are good for us. We don't trust his definition of good and evil, but come up with our own. Now, when we always act in our own way, it leaves us in a condition where we're not always happy, but quite lonely and alienated from God and ourselves, both in the present and throughout eternity. The second question is, by whom am I saved? And this is where the hope comes in. This is where um, the beauty of God steps in. God has uh, care, such care for humanity. He says this in John 3 verse 16, that his care for humanity was so great that he sent his unique son among us so that those who count on him might not lead a futile and failing existence, but have the undying life of God himself. So we are saved by Jesus, who has all the fullness of God present in him, who reconciles to himself all things, whether on earth or heaven, by making peace by the blood of the cross. On that cross, he absorbed all evil and overcame human, worldly and spiritual sin on this cross. And from there, he began the great reversal. So we are saved from this kingdom of darkness brought into the kingdom of God. We are saved to be transferred and to operate from another kingdom. It's called the kingdom of God, a spiritual home and a resting place from where we can operate in new patterns of love. From this new spiritual home, we have the opportunity to know God and his ways. His ways and order are for our flourishing. He knows how he designed us to operate and he knows what's best. Being rooted in a relationship with him, we grow and we change into the family likeness in the family of love. We also get to participate with Jesus in the project of overcoming evil with good and thus reversing the effects of sin. We're saved for a new position and identity as God's children. And we're saved 
for a new power to operate in us, entering us, changing us from the inside into people of love and life and hope. And ultimately, this kingdom of God will renew and restore all things when it comes in its completion. Finally, how am I saved? In a word, it's by responding. Responding initially and continually. So to be saved is to enter the family of God, asking the head of the family, God the Father, to have access. We have to recognize that an act of entry is necessary. A deep humility and an acknowledgement of need and our desire to be united in the family. So that is a simple prayer, a prayer of entry, a prayer saying, sorry, please forgive me and thank you for making a way through Jesus. Once we're in the family, we're in a position to learn God's ways of love, patience, gentleness. We learn from reading God's word and by meeting with other family members. We're going to learn how to flourish together. I want to close by saying we don't earn our salvation, but that doesn't mean we don't put any effort in. The effort is to learn to train our characters, to practice overcoming bad habits with good ones, to practice overcoming evil with good in our relationships, our speech, at home, at work, in our studies, and extending that love to a needy world around us. So may God bless you as you practice these things and join the kingdom of God as one of his children. Amen.